Okay, so um, have you ever noticed how learning a new language can sometimes feel like, well, a bit of a chore? Yeah, definitely. I, I think we've all been there. Right. Like all those grammar rules and vocabulary lists, it can be a bit overwhelming. Like, wouldn't it be amazing to just sort of absorb fluency effortlessly? You know, like just yeah. wake up one day and be able to speak another language. I, I think most of us have that fantasy at some point or another, especially when it comes to languages. For sure. And and you know me, I'm always looking for those learning hacks, those shortcuts to make things a bit easier. Right. So when I saw this YouTube video you shared about improving English speaking skills, well, it really piqued my interest. Yeah, it's a fascinating approach. It is. The creator talks about this idea of learning through imitation mm -hmm. and, and practicing speaking English by yourself, even without a conversation partner. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, it's a method that's been gaining some traction. And it's not just about simple repetition either, mm. which is often what we think of with language learning. Right. You know, this goes a bit deeper. It's about really trying to internalize the structure, the grammar, even the feel of natural English conversation. Exactly. So it's not just about memorizing words. It's more about understanding how they all fit together, mm -hmm. how native speakers actually use them in real life. Absolutely. And and they use a really clever example in the video to illustrate this point. Oh, yeah. What's that? They talk about a childhood story about Santa Claus. Okay. And they break down how you can take this spoken piece and gradually make it your own. Okay. Not by changing the whole thing, mind you, but by starting small. You know, maybe swapping out a word here and there while sticking to the original sentence structure. So it's kind of like keeping the grammatical skeleton of the story intact, but adding your own personal flair to it. Precisely. The video compares it to tracing over a drawing. Mm. You're not trying to create a masterpiece on the first try. You're simply getting a feel for the lines, the proportions, the way things connect. And... By doing that with language, the idea is that you internalize the patterns in a way that feels more natural than just memorizing from a textbook. It makes it, it's like you're training your brain to think in the target language without even realizing it. Exactly. And and it goes even further than that with this whole easy to hard approach, which I find really intriguing. Easy to hard. So you start small and then gradually increase the difficulty. Exactly. Maybe you begin by just imitating phrases, then slowly work your way up to mimicking whole sentences, dialogues, maybe even speeches. Okay. I can see how that would build confidence over time. Mm -hmm. But where does actual grammar study fit into all of this? Right. Because it's not like you're completely ignoring grammar rules. <laughs> right. Right. That's where it gets really interesting. The video actually suggests that by imitating fluent speakers, you're already absorbing grammatical structures through a process called implicit learning. Implicit learning. Okay, you have to break that down for me. It sounds a bit like learning by osmosis. It kind of is. It's like learning without consciously realizing you're learning. Yeah. Think about how young children pick up language. Right. They don't start with grammar textbooks and verb conjugations. Definitely not. They learn by listening, by imitating their parents or siblings, and by experimenting with what they hear. That's so true. I remember when I was a kid, I used to try to copy the way my older sister spoke, even if I had no idea what the words actually meant. Exactly. And and in doing that, you were unconsciously picking up on the nuances of grammar and syntax. You were internalizing those rules without even realizing it. Wow. So you're saying that adults can tap into that same natural ability that we all have for language acquisition. That's the idea this video proposes, that yeah. we can leverage this innate ability through deliberate imitation. That's fascinating. So it's like we're hacking our inner child to become fluent. I kind of love that. But mm. how effective can this really be for adults? I mean, we learn differently than kids, right? That is a great question. And that's what we are going to dig into next. You know, it's true that as adults, our brains aren't exactly empty vessels waiting to be filled. We come to language learning with our own baggage, right? All those years of grammar rules and ideas about correct language. Yeah, for sure. But the interesting thing that this video argues is that maybe that's actually holding us back. You mean all that overthinking about grammar rules might actually be hindering our fluency? Exactly. It's about getting out of our heads and letting the language flow more naturally. Hmm. And it's not just about grammar either. The video also points out how this imitation method can help you naturally pick up vocabulary idioms, those little expressions that make your English sound more authentic. Oh, absolutely. Like those phrases that just roll off the tongue for native speakers, but when I try to use them, they just sound a bit off. Yeah. 
Exactly. It's like they only work in their natural habitat. Right. But by surrounding yourself with real spoken English, even if it's through recordings and then actively trying to reproduce those patterns, you're essentially training your brain to think and speak in a more native like way. So it's like you're developing an ear for the language mm -hmm. rather than just memorizing a bunch of rules. Precise. Okay. I'm definitely intrigued by this whole approach. But let's get practical for a moment. If someone wants to try this easy to hard imitation technique, where do they even begin? Well, a good starting point is to choose a piece of spoken English that resonates with you, something you genuinely enjoy listening to. This could be a favorite podcast, a TED talk, even a scene from a movie or TV show that you love. So find something that holds your interest and use that as your source material. Exactly. Okay. And then you would start by imitating smaller chunks like phrases or short sentences and gradually work your way up to larger sections. Right. And it's important to remember that it's not about memorizing every single word. It's more about capturing the essence of what's being said and finding your own way to express it naturally. So there's room for experimentation for putting your own spin on things. Absolutely. In fact, that's encouraged. The beauty of this method is that it allows you to discover your own voice within the framework of natural English. I love that. So it's not about trying to sound like someone else. It's about developing your own unique fluency. Now, the video also talks about combining different approaches to imitation. What's the reasoning behind that? Well, I think it's about keeping things fresh and preventing the practice from becoming monotonous. Makes sense. By incorporating a variety of imitation exercises like mimicking short phrases, longer sentences, or even entire speeches, you're constantly challenging yourself and keeping your brain engaged on different levels. It's like cross-training, but for your English skills. Exactly. You're working on different aspects of language acquisition, pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar, intonation, all in a way that feels organic and, dare I say, enjoyable. Okay, that definitely sounds more appealing than my dusty old grammar textbook from high school. I can imagine. And as you progress and gain confidence, you can gradually increase the difficulty, just like with any skill you're trying to master. Precisely. It's a journey, and this video really encourages listeners to embrace the process, to see mistakes not as failures, but as stepping stones to improvement. I love that perspective. But what about those people who cringe at the thought of talking to themselves in English? Any advice for overcoming that initial hurdle? Oh, that's a common concern. And the video actually addresses this directly. The creator suggests finding a space where you feel completely comfortable. Okay, so like a judgment-free zone. Exactly. This could be your bedroom, a quiet park, even just going for a walk by yourself. The important thing is to create an environment where you can practice freely without feeling self-conscious. So it's about giving yourself permission to make mistakes without fear of judgment. Exactly. Remember, this is about your own personal growth. Yeah, it's like facing your fear of public speaking, but in the comfort of your own home. Exactly. And speaking of comfort zones, you know, one thing that struck me about this approach is that it requires a certain level of self-discipline. Or because you're not obligated to show up for a class or report to a teacher. Exactly. It's all on you. So did the video offer any tips on staying motivated? Yeah. Because that's often the biggest hurdle, right? It did. It really emphasized the importance of consistency. Okay, so like making it a habit. Precisely. And the good news is it doesn't have to be this huge time commitment. You don't need to spend hours and hours every day practicing. That's a relief. Even just setting aside 15 or 20 minutes a day for some focused imitation practice can make a world of difference. So it's more about quality over quantity. Exactly. It's about finding those small but consistent pockets of time in your day and turning them into opportunities for growth. I love that. And you know what's great about this method? You can literally do it anywhere, anytime, without anyone even knowing. Exactly. It's like your little secret. Right. This has been such an eye-opening conversation. I think what I appreciate most about this approach is that it demystifies language learning. I agree. It makes it feel accessible to anyone, regardless of their learning style or background. Absolutely. It reminds us that we all possess this innate ability to acquire language, and sometimes the most effective approach is also the simplest. Exactly. Well said. It's like rediscovering that childlike curiosity and playfulness that we often lose as we get older. And you know what I find particularly fascinating is how this whole easy to hard method really mirrors the way we naturally acquire our first language as children. Oh, absolutely. Think about it. We don't start with grammar rules, do we? No way. Yeah. We learn by imitating, by experimenting, by making a ton of mistakes along the way. Exactly. And eventually it all just clicks. It's amazing how our brains are wired for language acquisition. 
when you really think it about it. It is. And that's why I think this approach holds so much promise. So listener, here's something to consider. Could incorporating elements of imitation into your language learning journey unlock a new level of fluency for you? It's something to ponder as we wrap up this deep dive. Food for thought. This has been fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing these insights. My pleasure. Until next time.